Um, thank you very much. My name is Dimitri Daskalakis. I'm really happy to be here today uh, presenting on our status neutral approach, a whole person approach to ending the HIV epidemic in the US, but a model that can be adapted in many different settings. So I'll start by saying that um, a status neutral approach is needed for several reasons. One has to do with the fact that stigma continues to be a factor that hinders progress in ending the HIV epidemic. In fact, when we look at our uh, national HIV ending, ending the HIV epidemic initiative, our jurisdictions cite stigma as the number one enemy, the number one barrier to achieving the goals of ending HIV. So what is this stigma? What does it mean? The HIV stigma um, that people experience, whether they're living with HIV or are trying to access HIV prevention services, really create a vicious cycle of social isolation, depression, poor physical health, which then yields even worse mental health. So trying to address and mitigate um, stigma where possible is a really important strategy to achieving the goals of allowing people easier access to HIV testing, HIV treatment, and HIV prevention. So it's not only HIV stigma that's the issue. An individual's experience with HIV prevention and care cannot be understood without considering different facets of their identity, um, including their race, their gender, yes, their HIV status, their class and sexual orientation. So research shows that there is significant intersection uh, between HIV related stigma and um, other identities and stigmas experienced. So specifically among people of color or trans uh, or transgender people or people who are um, same gender loving men who have sex with men, gay or bisexual men, as well as women who uh, may not, um, who experience sexism um, in collaboration with uh, the experience of HIV um, stigma. So really it is not in isolation, but it is one, one factor that we could potentially address um, through addressing our systems. Stigma and structural barriers are a major obstacle and they deter people from seeking HIV prevention and care. So in the US, um, homophobia and internalized homophobia are independently and negatively associated with access to HIV prevention among young men who have sex with men, controlling for HIV status, relationship status, education, and housing. Greater internalized homophobia was associated with never having tested for HIV among Black men who have sex with men, who in the U.S. are very overrepresented in our HIV epidemic. Stigma in its many forms was, again, the most cited barrier to pre-exposure prophylaxis adherence for young men who have sex with men and transgender women of color. So what can we do to address stigma? How can we change our systems so our systems don't have one door for someone living with HIV and another door for individuals who could benefit from prevention and in fact, maintaining and supporting a system of stigma um, and division that um, is not serving the goal of ending the HIV epidemic and really um, limiting HIV transmission. So another factor beyond the fact that stigma is a huge barrier is that duplicate services are just inefficient. People with HIV um, and those who could benefit from HIV prevention have similar needs. They're really from the same populations. So these, these duplicate services and programs are inefficient. And when we talk to our jurisdictions and our community-based organizations, um, funding that maintains these structures uh, continually are a barrier to providing services to a community in a status-neutral way rather than um, in a statist way. Um, in the U.S., the Ryan White HIV AIDS program is a great model. Um, it uses a medical whole model in which there is a multidisciplinary approach where care, case management, and support services are actually integrated and patient-provider relationships are emphasized. Um, the Ryan White program in the U.S. approximates the opportunity for universal health care for people living with HIV. Um, more than half of people with diagnosed HIV in the US, in fact, receive services through the Ryan White HIV AIDS program each year. Um, also, we know that approximately 75% of these uh, programs uh, provide on-site case management and wraparound services, like assistance for food, housing, and transportation. We also know that patients who are served by Ryan White were more likely to have access to on-site mental health and substance abuse services. Now, Ryan White 
needs to exist because the needs of people living with HIV are extremely important. But we should take a lesson from that and say, Ryan White and similar status programs only serve people living with HIV from the perspective of the wraparound services and other uh, needs that they address. So really looking at stat at strategies to try to address this is critical. I have a really important example among transgender women in the United States in a survey done, the National HIV Behavioral Sur um, Survey, um, what we found was that um, HIV positive transgender women were less likely to have suicidal ideation, have attempted suicide, than their counterparts who were HIV negative. I don't think that it's because there's a big difference based on their HIV status. I think it's about the fact that services are, are siloed and difficult for HIV negative folks to access. Realizing that all of these intertwine in a syndemic from the perspective of really achieving population-wide health as opposed to just focusing on a status of a test. Now, what is the HIV status neutral um, model of prevention and care? Uh, it is a way of looking at strategies to braid together services, braid together funding, and really use the HIV test as a, a gate opener. A positive test brings people into the system. There they get treatment. They have access to things that help them have a higher quality of life. They get effective treatment. They integrate with HIV primary care. And then the goal is to keep them engaged. Keeping them in the treatment pathway means it's good for their health and also prevents transmission of HIV. Similarly, an HIV negative test opens a prevention pathway. High quality services and care that supports the health of the individual allows them to actually make HIV a priority. And we can work toward getting them onto a prevention pathway that works for them. Whether it's a condom or PrEP, it doesn't matter. But the goal really is engagement. And engagement means creating culturally inclusive and responsive quality of care that addresses not only HIV, but the syndemic issues that actually impact on the day-to-day -day lives of this, these populations. So I call it a framework. And I call it status neutral because the same approach is used to engage and retain people in care regardless of their HIV status. The status neutral approach is unique because both pathways promote continual assessment of each person's needs. The end stage is not going on PrEP. The end stage is not viral suppression. It is engagement because that engagement is what is so critical. So this continuous high quality care provides people with the tools that they need to stay healthy, and to help stop HIV, either by going on PrEP, using other prevention strategies, or by maintaining a viral load. So I'm not gonna say that the status neutral approach is what will dramatically decrease new HIV infections, but if we can address stigma and bring more people into the system, we have the technology to prevent HIV transmission and to keep people living with HIV healthy. Um, this strategy supports and enables optimal health through continuous engagement um, in comprehensive services and care, and really says, how can we help the whole person and not just their HIV status? It also increases opportunities for more efficient service delivery. No one wants to take services away from people living HIV. They are critical. We need to build them bigger and better. But Stat services for people who are at risk for HIV should mirror the services that people living with HIV are getting. And we need to strive for improved opportunities um, for service delivery for people living with HIV or for those at risk. And at the end of the day, addressing stigma and bringing people into systems that are culturally responsive helps improve health equity. So how are we advancing status neutral care? So I'll start by saying we have our four core strategies. All of them are status neutral um, in terms of the work that we do nationally, as well as the work that we're doing to end the HIV epidemic. It's a, a recipe that we all have in common across the world. Test people for HIV, make it simple and accessible link people living with HIV to care and treatment and get them there quickly. And if you have people who've left care, bring them back in. Use the technology that we have to prevent HIV infection. In the US, that means pre-exposure prophylaxis, as well as syringe service programs for our uh, population that inject drugs. And then finally, use strategies to respond to clusters. Um, outbreaks of HIV for us represents failure in our prevention and treatment fabric. And so we really need to address those in real time. But you can't just have this be all HIV. Part of the... Uh, of the um, status neutral strategy is really looking at ways that we can harmonize a response to syndemic scenarios, HIV, viral hepatitis, STIs, substance use, 
you can't look at the person and, and really minimize or reduce them to an HIV status, but really look at the whole person concerns, which include infectious disease considerations, but also incre- uh, in, involve uh, considerations such as substance use and abuse, as well as mental health. So we're doing a lot of work now to advance status neutral uh, service uh, delivery in the US um, through very through multiple different strategies. A few examples include encouraging integrated service delivery. So many of our uh, funding programs allow flexible resources for health departments and community-based organizations to actually implement such services. We are conducting implementation science. And one great example is um, one of our, uh, our opportunities for funding in the US is to build status neutral services in transgender health environments. So really trying to identify what the best practices are, how we can bring that status neutral egg, that structure into a system where people already are coming for a whole person care. How can we kiss it with HIV treatment and prevention with testing being our guide? And then finally, um, really thinking about how we can build partnerships. So this does not get, get built in a day. Elements of this are very aspirational. So how can we work with other agencies and other funders to be able to achieve a more status neutral system? Um, And I'll say again, we have several funding uh, opportunities that we've created uh, domestically to work on this. And I talked about the transgender status neutral community clinic model. And also recently we have uh, increased the flexibility of our health departments to be able to use our flagship funding to pay for CDC recommended clinical care costs related to PrEP. In effect, creating an opportunity for matching what's happening on the Ryan White side, the HIV positive side of the equation with care services that reach to people regardless of their ability to pay. And with that, I would like to thank you for the opportunity. I uh, look forward to uh, hearing more um, in our discussion. Thank you.